right? Don and Byron, guess what they were doing this week? Uh oh, is a good thing. All right, uh, they were actually. It's a good thing. They were going door to door. Apparently last week, right? Where's Byron? Byron, where are you, buddy? He's somewhere around here. Praise God. And they're going door to door, sharing the gospel. You know, sharing God's message of love to get saved before it's too late. That's a good thing, right? That's something we all should be doing. And so apparently they knocked on this door of this lady there, and and the uh, night, hey man, you know, could we talk to you? But she wasn't at all happy to see him at all. Yeah. In fact, she told them in no uncertain terms she did not want to hear their message and she slammed the door in their faces, man. But, that's right. Uh, much to her surprise, the door actually, it did not close. In fact, it just, boing, bounced right back open. And so she tried it again and she really put her back into it this time. And she slammed that door again, boom, but the same result, it just bounced back open. And so she was convinced that these rude church people were sticking their foot in the door, right? And so she reared back to give it a big old giant slam that would teach them both a lesson. And then Byron spoke up and says, ma'am, before you do that again, you might want to move your cat. <laughs> and all the dog lovers said, yeah. amen, preacher, preacher. Uh, let's close in prayer. No, I got a lot to cover. Uh, but as you guys can see, I mean, give it up for Byron and Dawn. Isn't that awesome? Uh, <laughs> apparently putting up with all kinds of persecution so that other people might be saved. That's what we're doing. That's what we should be doing, all of us. Uh, but apparently the point is this. That lady caused herself, not to mention her cat, okay, uh, 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 some serious pain for not wanting to listen to God's message of love, right? But folks, believe it or not, it gets even worse than that. Did you know the Bible says that the whole planet is going to do the same thing with God's message of love in the last days? They're going to do the exact same thing. And because of that, they're going to be thrust into the Antichrist kingdom. And hello, you don't want to be there. And that's all going to begin at the rapture of the church. And folks, we've been seeing the reason why it's such a horrible time frame, okay, is because the Bible's very clear. This is a time when God pours out his wrath on a wicked and rebellious planet. Jesus said, I didn't say it. He said, listen, direct quote here. He says, it's a time of greater horror. Listen to that, like a horror movie that lasts for seven years, except this one's real. No special effects needed from Hollywood. It's a time of greater horror, listen, than this world has ever seen or will ever see again, and that unless that time of calamity, the human race would be destroyed. That's from Jesus. I don't know about you, but I'd say that that's something to avoid if you could. Did anybody? Okay, but as we've been seeing, praise God, you can. God's not just a God of wrath, which again, it's not a bad thing. That just means he's going to put it into all this baloney we see today. Amen? Okay, but he's also a God of love as well. And because he loves you and I, he gives us warning signs so that we can have a chance to escape the wrath to come so that we would know when, we don't know the exact day nor the hour, but we would know when it's getting close. And so in order to keep you and I here at sunrise from experiencing the ultimate bad day of being left behind, hello, even worse than apparently squishing your cat in a door repeatedly, uh, <laughs> is we're going to continue our study called The Final Countdown. That's right. And he's not here today, but his legend is still going to continue. We've already seen how the prophet John has told us how uh, the number 10 sign on The Final Countdown. He's watching, he's speaking. That's right, from afar. Uh, the number 9 sign was uh, modern technology. Number 8, worldwide upheaval. Number uh, 7, the rise of falsehood. Number 6, the rise of wickedness. Number 5, the rise of apostasy. How many signs does God got to give us? You know what I'm saying? Of course, you're not listening to me. You're watching those eyeballs and the lips move, aren't you? I know. Uh, but anyway, uh, number four, the rise of a of one world religion. Number three, the rise of a one world government. Number two, the rise of a one world economy. And last time, if you're here, we began the final sign, the number one sign on the final countdown. Hello is the mark of the beast. And what we saw clearly, folks, the Bible clearly, God out of love, lovingly foretold, warned you and I, that when you see all the nations around the world, listen, promoting some sort of marking system, to be put into people's bodies that will link them to a global matrix system that will then control all the buying and selling on the planet, guess what? You're in the last days. You could laugh at it, you could scoff at it, you could like it, lump it, or leave it. You're in the generation of the last days. And we saw that's happening now with the conditioning proof where we're being conditioned right now to receive this mark of the beast through the media, hello, through the matrix they're building, the internet, and even the quotations where they admit this is exactly what they're up to, folks. There's no conspiracy here. It is demonstrated fact. If you're paying attention, they admit it. And so again, it's an indicator from God. Guess what? Jesus Christ is coming back to get us. That's a good thing, right? Amen. Isn't that what the Bible says we're supposed to be doing as a Christians? We should be running from his appearing. Oh, I'm sorry, wrong translation. We should long for his appearing. And so when we hear news, he's getting close. Whoa, we should be getting excited like a, a bride excited for her wedding. How many guys, uh, ladies, you are just so bummed out at your... No, I better not ask that question. Let's move on. Uh, <laughs> But that's still not all. That's right. That's for another study. Uh, the fourth way we know we're being conditioned to receive the actual mark of the beast is what I call, hello, the biometric proof. 
Oh boy, he's got everything in plan, folks. You see, the Bible is very clear, folks. You not only have to be connected to this global matrix system in the last days that the Bible calls the mark of the beast system that ultimately is going to control all kinds of things, I would say, as well as the Bible, uh, as well as the uh, buying and selling. But you specifically, the Bible says, have to be connected to the system with your body. As strange as that is, you have to be connected to the system with your body. But don't take my word for it. Let's listen to God's. Another passage here, Revelation chapter 20. Let's go ahead and turn there. Revelation chapter 20, verses 1 through 6. If you find the dictionary, what do you do? Hang a left. It's just uh, right there a couple pages back. Uh, at least if you're in the A in the dictionary. Uh, Revelation 20 verses 1 through 6. Now this is after the seven year tribulation. At the end of the seven year tribulation, Revelation 19, we've been there before. We saw that's the second coming of Jesus Christ. At the end of the seven year tribulation, he puts down the battle of Armageddon. Can you believe it? The whole world, the Antichrist and the false prophet, try to take on God. That's crazy, folks. And of course, they lose. Hello. Okay. And then after that, here comes the millennial kingdom. And this is the context, the time frame of what we're dealing in this text here. Let's take a look. And what you're going to see, there's a good payoff. I would say, anyway, my personal opinion, Mary. Uh, there's a good payoff for those who refuse to accept the mark of the beast during the seven-year tribulation. Let's take a look at that. Revelation chapter 20, verse 1 through 6 says this. And, and John, the apostle John, he says, he says, hey, listen, I saw this angel coming down out of heaven having the key to the abyss and holding in his hand a great chain. And he sees the dragon. If only I knew who the dragon was. Anyway, just keep reading. Uh, the, the dragon, the ancient serpent, who's called who? The devil or Satan, in case you still can't get it. And bound him for a thousand years. Now I have to kick this every time I come across this passage. Notice how many angels it took to bind Satan who tries to give us the impression he's all powerful like God. Oh, by the way, it's singular. It's one Keep that in mind, folks, when he wants to lie to you, okay? Jesus Christ is the one who's in charge. But he bound Satan, okay, for a thousand years, and he threw him into the abyss, and he locked and sealed it over him to keep him from deceiving the nations anymore until the thousand years were ended, and after that, he must be set free for a short time. Now, listen, I saw thrones on which were seated those who had been given authority to judge. Why? Because here's what happened. I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony for Jesus and because of the word of God. They had not worshipped the beast or his image, and they had not, what? They had not received his mark on their, where? Foreheads or their hands. Now, here's the reward. They came to life and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Now, the rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were ended at the end of the millennium. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy are those who have part in the first resurrection. The second death has no power over them, but they will be priests of God and of Christ, and they will reign with him for a thousand years. That's real, folks. That's not make-believe. That's a promise from God. And maybe it's just me, but I'm kind of thinking it's pretty obvious. There's a great payoff for those who unfortunately find themselves in the seven-year tribulation. You didn't have to. You could have got saved before. But if you find yourself in the seven-year tribulation, there's a good payoff for those who refuse to worship the Antichrist or his image and refuse to take the mark of the beast, right? right. Yeah, in fact, it used the word there, blessed. Makarios in the Greek, it means spiritually prosperous. Right? They're blessed how? They are blessed by getting to rule and reign with Jesus Christ personally. For not just one, but a thousand years. And they actually get to become priests of God. Isn't that cool? And how many guys would say, I know you're waking up today. Uh, how many guys would say, that's a, that's a much better alternative than the other thing that happened there? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay, and, and that's the word there, the second death. What the second death is referring to, folks, is the act of, listen, being chucked into the lake of fire forever and ever and forever being tormented for all eternity, forever and ever, years without end. Woo! Yeah, it's horrible, isn't it? But I didn't say that in the Bible. If you continue to read that passage, it tells us what this second death is. You don't want to be there. Revelation chapter 20, verse 14 through 15 says, Then death and Hades were thrown into where? The lake of fire. AJ, if I only knew what the second death was, I have to read article after article coming. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the lake of fire is the second death. I said this before. A lot of times, oh, I can't study Bible prophecy. It's too confusing. I just, I'll never, half the time it, it defines itself. You just, if you just keep, keep reading, okay, grab it in context. The lake of fire is the second death. Now, if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire, okay? In other words, that is your destiny, not just then, but even today, if you sit here and you continue to reject Jesus Christ as your savior, 
The Bible is clear. Here is your time frame. If you continue to persist, you are number one going straight into hell. After that, you get a small respite, if you will, and you stand before God at his judgment throne, the great white throne judgment. And then, of course, you can't, uh, it's too late for you anyway. You should have got saved. But then after that, you are cast into the lake of fire. That is the second death. And that's why he says, blessed are those who don't go through that. Okay? And you thought hell was bad? You ain't seen nothing yet. It literally is going from the frying pan into the fire. Okay? Now, here's the point. How many guys would say that, again, man, that's a really bad future <laughs> right that's not a really good destiny to have i got a destiny now i'm going to yeah you don't want to go there okay now here's the question i have when you look at that in the context there with the mark of the beast and, and the, the mark and receiving that how then does the antichrist get people on a massive scale around the whole planet get to risk this horrible destiny and still receive his mark anyway how does that guy do it well, I think the answer is a step-by-step -step process. Notice where he puts the mark. According to this passage and others we're going to see in a little bit, the Bible says it's either on two places, on their foreheads or in their hands. Specifically, other passages say right hands, okay? And so this tells us logically then, guys, this is what we can expect to see happening on the planet. The Antichrist at some point has to not just condition this world to be linked to a global matrix system that literally controls everything, including the buying and the selling. Listen, he has to get everybody on the planet linked to this system using a body part, right? If we're getting close, we have to see that, and specifically the body part of the head or the right hand. And I don't know about you guys, but I am so glad that we see zero evidence of anybody using any body parts to link themselves to a database, let alone make financial transactions. <laughs> yes, the sarcasm and the weird look there uh, gives it away. Uh, folks, it's already happening. We're already in stage two, well underway. Uh, take a look at this. This, this is why. In fact, this is our, it's already got a term out there that we've been conditioned to accept. It's called biometrics. Okay? Now, of course, you don't want to say, hey, we got this new uh, identity tracking financial technology that's really secure for you. It's called the mark of the beast. See, that's not good advertising. People never go for that. So what you say, you say it's biometrics. Right? That's what the system is, folks. You call it biometrics all you want. But if you understand Bible prophecy, it's stage two of getting people linked to the system. It's called biometrics. And whether we realize or not, for the first time in the history of mankind, this is why you should pay attention now. For the first time in man's history, we have the ability to biometrically identify people anywhere on the planet and link them to a global matrix system that is starting to control everything, including buying and selling. It's here now. Okay, and we're being conditioned uh, to receive it. And the first way we know that modern day biometrics is conditioning us to go to stage two with the mark of the beast, folks, is what I call the database proof. Let's break it down. If this is really going to happen in the book of Revelation, that people are going to get a mark in their right hand or their forehead, let's break it down. You see, put yourself in the Antichrist shoes, right? Pay attention. If you're going to monitor and control the whole planet with this mark of the beast system, okay, then logically, you not only need to track people wherever they go, but you've got to have some sort of database to identify who they are in the first place, let alone what they're doing and specifically what they're buying and selling, right? And if you were here at the One World Government uh, section, we saw that those databases are already in place. Okay, they're called mega databases. Let me just share a couple things. One of them we just saw was a U.S. company called Axiom. It's A-C-X-I-O-M. And it operates one of the world's largest databases on 95% of all American households right now. And this is just one of them. Okay, and because of that, listen to this, 24 hours a day, they right now, as we're sitting here, they are gathering information, storing information on you and I from credit card transactions, uh, magazine subscriptions, telephone numbers, real estate records, car registrations, fishing licenses, you name it. And because of all this information they're gathering on you and I right now, they can provide a full profile on every one of us, listen, right down to whether or not we own that dog or cat. It, there's a theme here, isn't there? Uh, enjoy camping or gourmet cooking. Read the Bible or other books. What our occupation is, what car we drive, what videos we watch, where our favorite vacation spots are, and listen, how much food and gas we buy. They already have a database that knows what we buy and sell. Hmm, interesting. In fact, as we saw before, just to recap, right now it's estimated that each adult in the developed world is already located on an average of not just the one from Axiom, 300 different databases 
with 1,500 points on you, data points on you. It's a huge file on us right now. Okay, in other words, for the first time in mankind's history, let's put it together. Let's examine this text. For the first time in man's history, the ability for the Antichrist to know everything about everyone on the whole planet, including who you are, where you are, what you do, what you buy and sell, it's already here. Right? It's already here. Now listen, let's go back into our text. Databases are step one. According to the Bible, we know biblically speaking, at some point, these databases have to be linked biometrically with our body parts. Right? Well, guess what, folks? They're already here. And not just databases is what they're pushing for. What they're pushing for is biometric databases. See, we've been conditioned. These databases collecting all this information on you and I, they've been out there for decades. Now the latest push, even as we're going to see in the government, is we need to now mandate biometric databases. They're going to stage two. Let's take a look at some of that evidence that we are seeing that they're already here, folks. Connecting your body to a database. Let's take a look at that. Uh, the FBI is embarking on a one billion, not million, one billion dollar effort to build the world's largest biometric database of people's physical characteristics, your body parts, that would give the government unprecedented abilities to identify individuals in the United States and around the world what? Biometric. Biometrically, by your body parts. Billion. Not a million, a billion dollar thing. In coming years, law enforcement authorities around the world will be able to rely on all kinds of body parts. Iris patterns, face shape data, scars, even the ways that we walk and talk to identify, of course, criminals and terrorists. But as we saw before, what if you as a Christian, we as a, became a terrorist? Right? All right, that's the problem. It, quote, it's going to be an essential component of tracking and it will create a, quote, always on surveillance society. This new system would allow authorities to exchange this biometric information where? Worldwide, and that's why they're building it according to the same standards to other countries. Britain, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. Quote, listen, people's bodies will become national ID cards. And the government taking a big new step looking to build a huge database of people's physical characteristics. The FBI is taking on a billion dollar project to gather fingerprints, palm patterns, even digital pictures of faces. Eventually, it could expand to include iris patterns, face shape patterns, scars, even information about how you walk and talk. It's called biometrics, and it could change the face of law enforcement, but it's also causing a lot of controversy. American Morning's legal contributor, Sonny Hostin, joins us now. So we're talking about some incredible stuff, like tracking the shape of your earlobe. So yeah. what is the FBI's goal in doing all of this? Well, the goal is to have a comprehensive database to track terror suspect, suspects, criminals, that sort of thing. For, for those of us who aren't on terror watch lists, like mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. two of us, I mean, do we <laughs> need to... Uh, yeah, hopefully, as far as we know. Uh, as far as um, we know, do we need to be concerned about this kind of thing? You know, I, I think so. I, I really think so. You know, the ACLU and other groups are saying Big Brother is watching. But you do right. have to be careful. And it's interesting because a lot of this information is already in a database. I'm already in a database having been a, a federal prosecutor and, and having security oh, clearance. I'm already in that database. Mm -hmm. uh, what the FBI wants to do is take that information and keep it. And, and that's the problem. Sunny, thanks. And I Sonny. hope that you're not on that terror watch list. Oh, yeah, sure. we, we don't know. <laughs> Whoa, interesting. Getting a lot of mileage out of that terrorism. And well, well, that's kind of freaky, but maybe they need to do step one first. You see, because right now the Obama administration is working on plans to require all American workers to obtain a national biometric ID card. You know, the immigration crisis thing. And we, George, remember that when we were down to L.A. to get the movie camera? We stopped in at Carl's Jr. This system, check it out, it's called E-Verify. And you have to register, before you can hire somebody, you have to e-verify. You have to check in with the database of the government to see if they're really who they really are. But it's now being linked biometrically. Okay, and that's what's happening. Unless you think it's not going to happen, a biometric database of all things, guess what? It's hidden there in the immigration reform bill. It's not a theory, it's already happening. Uh, buried in 800 pages of legislation is the proposal for a national biometric database of virtually every adult in the United States make it the first step in a ubiquitous national ID system. Okay, that's what's going on with the immigration issue. It's been used as, as, as an excuse, in my opinion. Employers will be obliged to look up every new hire in the database to verify their identity and advocates fear this is gonna lead to the proof of self via your body part biometrics being required at all kinds of places at polling places to rent a house to buy a gun to open up a what bank account acquire credit board a plane attend a sporting event even log on to the internet didn't we see that last week the the matrix you gotta oh, interesting that's inside this bill folks quote it's like a national id system without the card oh 
Oh, so let's first get the card. But see, you can lose the card. So let's get it into your body where you can't lose it. It's all happening right now in our government, folks. Uh, stage two. Uh, if that wasn't well enough, President Obama also now wants your DNA. A national DNA database. Let's take a look at that. Now, Barack Obama is proposing a new plan to create a national DNA database. It would be created by taking the DNA of every single person that is arrested, even if they're not necessarily convicted of a crime. Wait a second. So you're going to uh, take my DNA, even if I'm not guilty of it? Well, first of all, even if it were of a crime, what right do you have to take my DNA? What is the going on here? Why would you want a national DNA database? Well, I think I got a theory and it goes like this. Uh, maybe it's the same reason why uh, Australian officials in that country are calling for a national DNA database as well, except they want this at the time of birth. Let's put this together. Let's take a look at this. The New South Wales government and police have begun a major push to have all Australians entered on a national DNA register as a way to fight crime. They want everyone's DNA to be recorded at birth. Murders, rapes, armed robberies, assaults, kidnappings. There are 60,000 outstanding cases on the New South Wales crime scene database. And the police force's chief scientist says if they could match DNA they've recovered to a name. Probably half of those would be solved immediately. Immediately? Well, you'd have a profile and you'd have a profile of the person and a match. The proposal is for a DNA database of all Australians from birth. It would be a massive game changer, you, you think? Oh, it'd be a massive game changer. Yeah, a massive game changer. You know why? Because we all know that computers never lie, nor do they make mistakes. And all you'd have to do is get a knock at your door and get arrested and say, excuse me, but your DNA, that's on database, uh, showed up at a crime scene. You murdered somebody. We're here to take you away. I'm telling you, folks, it's the ultimate tool to get rid of people left and right. And who's going to say anything about it? Uh, Israel is also launching a new biometric database. They're doing that this year. Okay, it's already in place. You think, well, what are they doing? Well, I'm telling you, it's going global. And scientists right now are calling for a world DNA database. Well, okay, maybe Australia, but the United States, but why would you want one around the world? Because put this in the hands of the Antichrist on a global scale. How are you going to get rid of all these dissenters? All of a sudden, their DNA starts showing up at different places, and you have the legal right and the justification in the news. Hey, I'm sorry, I know it's a shock. I know it's a shock that all these pastors just keep getting, keep getting guilty of these crimes and these Christian people and Christian leaders. But their DNA just keeps showing up at these places. What do we do? It's the ultimate way to get rid of people. That's the kind of society, folks, we're headed for. Which should not be a surprise, by the way. Because the Antichrist is satanically inspired. And the Bible says that Satan is not only a liar and the father of all lies. He's a murderer and he's been one from the beginning. This is what he wants to do, okay? But here's the point. It sure looks to me like every single person on the planet can right now, as we're sitting here, accurately and specifically be identified, tracked, and linked to a database with body parts. How about you? In fact, it's being mandated. You're going to have to do it whether you want to do it or not. Interesting. But that's not all. That's just step one. The second way we know that biometrics are conditioning to receive the actual mark of the beast is the head proof. The head proof, folks. Okay? You see, the Bible clearly says, folks, if you're going to control and monitor the whole planet with this mark of the beast system, you don't just need some general biometric database, okay, to identify people, to link them to the system. Listen, but at some point, you have to get specific with body parts, right? Specific body parts. In fact, let's remind ourselves, again, what those body parts are going to be. Uh, Revelation 14, verses 9 through 10, if anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on his where? forehead or on the hand he too will drink of the wine of God's fury which has been poured full strength into the cup of his wrath. In other words don't do it would be a common sense translation okay is what's going on here uh, but, but again to me the point is as we know what was the first body part in that passage that was mentioned here that people are going to be connected to the mark of the beast system it was the head the forehead right and once again I'm so glad we see no signs of people using their head uh, to be linked to a Biometric data. Man, is it progressing beyond belief. Let's take a look at some of that proof, folks. Uh, starting with your eyeballs. You know, how many guys realize that your eyeballs are connected to your head? Anybody? <laughs> Praise God, you're waking up today. Let's take a look. Eyeball scanning is now a reality. Uh, scientists have developed the first iris scanning technology to be deployed at schools, airports, and where does this keep coming up? 
finances, buying and selling, even for banks. Quote, imagine a world where you're no longer reliant on usernames and passwords. If you're going through a turnstile, it'll open up for you. If you embed it into a PC, it'll turn it on. If you put it on your phone, it'll log you into your email account. Isn't that awesome? Okay, and then the system is being rolled out this fall for school kids. Quote, kids will simply look into a binocular shaped scanner and it will listen, quote, beep if they're on the right bus and honk if they're on the wrong one. One person said, hey, apparently this is cheaper and easier than having teachers tell kids where to go. Are we getting lazy or what? Okay, let's take a look. This system also syncs itself with a mobile app to keep parents apprised of their kids' every move. Quote, every time a child boards or exits a bus, their parents get an email or a text with the child's photograph. And, oh, who's, who's working with this system? If you were here last week, yeah, Google. Uh, they get a Google map where they boarded or exited the bus as well as the time and date. Total surveillance society. Uh, and, and they can even scan your eye up to 15 feet, some of the technology away. You don't have to be right next to it anymore. And they can do 50 people per minute, even through contact lenses or glasses. Not gonna hide, okay? And let's continue on, okay? Uh, the technology also is soon available at, guess where? Banks, that's right. Quote, you can gain access at ATM in a blink. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and in airports, uh, systems will analyze your iris as you pass through security. Listen, identifying and welcoming you by name all just with your eyes. Here's some examples of what they're doing all with your eye, your head, of what our society is leading to. Check this out. This way for your ID. Welcome to the college orientation of the Hello. future. First, get your ID card. There you go. Then get your eyeball scanned. Look into this mirror, tell me you can see your eyes. Entering buildings using your eyes. Sound like science fiction? Hello, Mr. Yakamoto. Welcome back to the Gap. Biometric security, it's a growing trend. Iris scanning is catching on at colleges and even some elementary schools. Since Newtown, some elementary schools are experimenting with using iris scanners to ID kids getting on and off the school bus and several companies are competing for the business. This scanner is for airports. Welcome, Jerry. Welcome, Luciano. Welcome, David. Biolock Biometric Security, please choose your authentication method. So you can drag the lock to either where it says scan face or scan eye. So let's do a facial scan. Stand by while I attempt to authenticate you. Authentication process complete. Access granted. Access to the system is granted with what? Your eyes, your head. Okay, and it's going to get more specifically with your head. Okay, unless you think this is just some weird trend. It's for those techies out there. No, no, listen, it's already going on a massive scale. One city right now in Mexico, Leon, Mexico, is set to become the world's first whole city with its million plus citizens. This isn't like some place I grew up in Kansas with a population of 25. Yeah! Okay, this is a million plus people. They're going to become the world's first whole city uh, to be secured using biometrics ID. Okay, the system will allow people in Mexico to use their eyes, their head, to prove their identity right a bus, get help at a hospital, pass security on way to work, pay for a meal, order packages online, and even withdraw money from an ATM just with your eyeball, a part of your head. But again, it's getting specific with the head. Right now, in our own country, uh, Homeland Security is planning on using iris scans to search for illegal immigrants at the Border Patrol station in Texas. So you can't cross borders without your head and Stuff that's interesting. That's going on right now. And not just your eye, but again, your head. Right now, there are billions of facial images in databases around the world to recognize your whole head. And state police have already linked surveillance cameras to facial recognition software. And they're using them to instantly recognize and match people to their image database. And they can capture these images of your head as far away as 200 yards, two football fields away. They got you. And your face, your head, is in a database being kept on file. Okay, that's what's going on. But part of it, we've been able to give up to them. Listen to this. In fact, they're using these images in a crowd setting to determine what mood that crowd is in. 
MIT came up with him. It's called a mood meter. Watch this. And if you are happy, you get a smiley face. If you're not, and if you're a potential terrorist, look out. Look at this. Watch this. It's in action. Praise God, she smiled at the last. Did you guys see that? All right, if you guys want to be well protected, just walk out of here going, that was the greatest sermon I ever heard in my life. I like everything. I like, well, except for cats. But anyway, let's continue on. A mood meter, can you believe that? Those people, at least they're at the end. I don't think they know that they're being scanned with their heads and based on their head, their biometrics, what kind of mood they're in. Excuse me, that's where it's going. It's getting worse. Part of the conditioning process is to get you and I to think this is great. This is awesome. And uh, uh, what's that? Facebook is also helping to do just that. They've come out with a new program called Face Deals, where they use our photos that we uploaded voluntarily to Facebook so that they can I instantly recognize you in public and so give you that extra special deal. Let's take a look at Face Deals. We asked ourselves, why haven't Facebook check-ins gone mainstream? Check-ins provide a powerful mechanism for businesses to deliver discounts to loyal customers. But few businesses, and even fewer customers, are taking advantage of this. So we set out to evolve the check-in process by creating a seamless method for checking in and getting deals. Face Deals is an automated check-in system using passive facial recognition to notify you of in-store deals that are customized just for you. Cameras have been developed to identify Face Deals participants in a matter of seconds. When a face is confidently recognized, the deal is set into action. It's that simple. Huh? It's that simple. Isn't it awesome? For several years now, we voluntarily put up our face in a multitude of pictures. And, this, and that's voluntary. That's cool. You get a coupon, you know, but I'm sure it'll never become mandatory. Interesting. That's face deals. Uh, and you think, well, that's just a weird trend. No, whole countries, not just whole cities, whole countries are going this way. Ecuador is now implementing the world's first countrywide facial and voice recognition system. And once again, part of the FBI's billion dollar uh, biometric projects is for face. Your head as well is part of that system. But here's the, the point to me, folks. I don't know about you, but uh, 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 you might be thinking, well, okay, that's kind of creepy, Pastor Billy. I can see the trend starting to increase there. Uh, but that's just using your eye. That's just using your face. That's using your head to link yourself to a, a database. I mean, that's not buying and selling, really. I mean, I mean, I mean uh, uh, the Bible says you have to specifically, if we're getting close, you have to specifically see people using their head to specifically buy something uh, to make a purchase. And so that's not happening, so we're perfectly fine, right? Folks, I'm telling you, it's a step-by-step -step process. First, get the databases. Those have been in place for several uh, decades now. Two, get the biometrics going. Uh, and then get specific with the head to link it to the database. And then three, start getting people to use your head to make a payment exactly what the Bible said is coming. Here's one of the new systems that you could use your head right now to make a payment anywhere in society. Let's take a look. Imagine coming to a store and your wallet is already there. You pick up your things, approach to the checkout, give a meaningful nod, and that's it. Imagine you're late to your plane. There is a huge queue, but you instantly check in while running to the border control. Imagine you drive to the petrol station. You casually fuel your tank and your payment is done simultaneously. You just had to click OK. Imagine the shop where all those magic things came to life. People coming with friends just to show it off. Well, this is not a fiction anymore. They all got a Unical account. And now, wherever they go, I recognize them. Processing takes under a second. They sign in as soon as I see them. 
All they had to do was click OK. Hi, I'm your new friend, Unico. Wow. See if I can keep the theme going. I didn't get that time. Okay. Wow. Hey, let, let, me, let me switch the words up a little bit, see if we're getting close. Hi. I'm your new friend, Antichrist. All you have to do is click OK and make a payment with your head. Folks, this is how close we are. It's a step-by-step -step process. It's not just a database that's going to link us to do the buying and the selling. It has to get specific with the body parts, and we're already seeing the head payment system go into place. It's not 50 years down the road. Why should I listen to you Christians? You guys keep saying, how many decades now? Jesus is coming back. Nothing ever changed. Excuse me, it's changed now. It's getting close, okay? But that's not the third way that biometrics are conditioning us to receive the actual mark of the beast. I think you can guess where this is going. The second option there is the what? The hand. Let's take a look at another passage telling us that. It's all over the book of Revelation. Revelation 13, verses 16 through 17. He also forced everyone, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, the whole planet, to receive a mark on his where? Right hand or on his forehead. So that no one could buy or sell unless he had that mark in one of those two places, okay? And, and this is what we're seeing, folks. The second option, according to the Mark of the Beast system, is not just your head, but it's also the hand. And again, I'm so glad that nobody's being conditioned to use their hand in a biometric fashion to... Yeah, let's just skip it and let's just go to the, uh, the database. Here's the proof, folks. It's all over the place. Fingerprint scans are now being used to access computers. To, you know, get online, stuff like that. You gotta use your hand, a body part. Uh, to do that. They're being installed on the new ones. Uh, fingerprints are also being required right now to enter certain parks in the United States. Quote, city officials said the new security system will allow law enforcement to determine who was at the park and if something were to happen uh, and to identify them and to help stop vandalism, drug use, and break-ins. So you have to use your hand to be able to get into the park. Uh, a new company called ID Air has developed a system that can scan and identify a fingerprint, listen, from nearly 20 feet away. And the technology is similar right now to satellite imagery. I wonder if they're going to do this on a global basis. Like, oh, very interesting. Uh, and IDR's founder said that at some point the technology could be used to purchase biometrically using a fingerprint rather than a credit card. Use your hand uh, to make a payment. Uh, and the technology can also be used both in store and online. Wherever you buy and sell, you can use your hand. Okay, but that's just your finger. How about your hand? Well, they're even getting very specific with your hand. Hand scanners are right now being used at businesses and airports to automatically identify travelers. And, get this, hospitals are implementing palm scans. Quote, imagine going to the hospital and having your doctor or nurse retrieve your vital medical records simply by scanning the palm of your hand. The new system is called Patient Secure. Wow, don't you guys feel so secure? And I'll say it again and ruffle a couple feathers. Aren't you so glad that the government has taken over the health care system? Okay. Yeah, that's a whole other issue, isn't it? Uh, but, but you guys may think, well, hey, wait a second, Pastor Bill. Again, I'm sorry. Listen. Okay, yeah, that's your finger. That's your hand. Uh, it's being used to link you to a database. But uh, we don't see people actually using their hands to buy and sell stuff, do we? I'm telling you folks, pay attention. This is a step-by-step -step process. It's a conditioning process. First get the database, then get the biometrics, then get specific with the head, and now the hand, because you got the two options there, right? To start making a payment, and that too, folks, is already in play. And they always like to seem to start with the kids, too. Let's take a look at that. You've seen the science fiction in movies? using unique biological characteristics instead of keys. He's been identified on the metro. A facial or iris scan to unlock doors and digital accounts. An electronic, paperless society. John Ashton. Come summer, that kind of technology will leap off the big screen and one metro grocery store will make your identity available right at your fingertips. It's sci-fi technology that's about to enter the checkout lane all in the name of speed and convenience. You'll be able to buy anything from bread to beer if you agree to give the store your ultimate identity. Walk in with just your fingers. It's much easier just to swipe your fingers than to go through all the cards. A new form of technology has made its way to the register. Are you ready for this? Payment by fingertip. In Florida, coast-to-coast -coast convenience stores have become the first to use such technology. It's nothing more than converting your debit card or your checking account to uh, 
to apply it to a, your fingertip. The LA Unified School District is pushing a program to fingerprint some kids before they can get their lunch. Digitizing lunch scans district-wide has stirred a bit of controversy. LAUSD is the second largest school system in the school system across the country. It serves over half a million student meals every day. Students at Fauche Learning Center are expected to be the first in the district that use a fingerprint-like scanner to biometrically identify them from meals in the lunchroom. District officials say the system poses no security or privacy risks to children or their families and would help bring district cafeterias into the 21st century. Well, it looks and sounds like something out of the future, but a new palm scanning device will help Bossier Parish schools keep better track of what children are eating there. The electronic device will be implemented at all Bossier Parish schools. Workers are currently being trained on how to use it. A small infrared camera is used to scan a child's hand. And because palm and fingerprints are unique, the system can keep track of everything students eat and even what they're not supposed to eat. Food allergies can also be listed, as well as items you don't want your child to eat. And if a student picks one of those items, the system won't let them buy it. System won't let them buy it. System won't let them buy it. You know, today it's a fingerprint, tomorrow it, a microchip. Maybe that ushers in the mark of the beast. Yeah, today it's that. Tomorrow, maybe it's the mark of the beast. Folks, this is not 50 years down the road anymore. You can't say that anymore. You can't say that we're a long ways off. Woo, I can go back to building my castle here on earth, which is not what we're supposed to do as Christians. We need to get motivated. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is getting ready to come back. Unless you think that this is not just going to catch on worldwide, listen to these statistics, folks. Biometric ATM machines are starting to appear in Europe, and are, there's tens of thousands of them right now just in Japan alone being used by millions of people. In fact, listen, the machines are also dotted apart uh, around uh, parts of Asia, Latin America, the Middle East, and even Africa. You think, oh, Africa, they never... Listen, uh, uh, according to banking analysts, they are preferred by the rural workers out there in the remote areas because they're not accustomed to carrying all these cards. They like them. Okay? Out of uh, uh, hundreds of consumers recently involved in a pilot scheme, 94% said they are ready to use fingerprint, uh, fingerprint based technology when purchasing good or services. In other words, the majority of people, I want to use my hand to make payment. And for the first time in man's history, we now have a new global biometric payment system already in place. I'm not making up this name. This is the actual name. It's called World Pay. And quote, it's the world's first biometric payment system. So this is how far we are along in this process. For the first time in man's history, we can now use our hand or our head to make payment for something anywhere in the world. What more does God got to do to get our attention? This is not a game, folks. This is real. This is really happening if you know what to look for. And that's one of the multitude of benefits of taking the time to study Bible prophecy so we're not caught off guard. Amen? God's given us that privilege, that insight to know what the world doesn't know so that we could take that motivation and get busy sharing with them so they don't end up in hell, let alone the seven-year tribulation. That's why Jesus tells us, folks, every single time, Luke 28, uh, 21, 28, when these things begin to take place, freak out, run to the hills, go hide... Oh, I'm sorry, wrong translation. Stand up, man. Lift up your heads. Woo! Jesus Christ is coming back to get us. Our redemption is near, folks. This is not bad news. This is great news. But as always, as we close, man, hey, listen, if you're here today and you're not a Christian, hey, wh what more proof do you need? I mean, this is coming alive like never before. And think about it. Uh, you could be elsewhere, but why does God have you here today? I would say it's an act of mercy because the people out there, they don't know this. You know it now. What are you going to do? Are you going to sit there and continue to scoff and mock like I used to do? Okay? Or are you going to continue to do that and then what's going to happen is you're going to make the same horrible mistake as the people uh, did in Lot's day when God was merciful to them, gave them a chance to flee and escape the wrath. No. Here's what Jesus said. He said that same unfortunate attitude is going to be repeated again. Here's what he says here in uh, Luke 17, verses 28 through 30. Jesus said this. He said it was the same in the days of Lot. People were eating and drinking and buying and selling and planting and building. You know, same old, same old. How's the economy doing, Bob? But the day Lot left Sodom, fire and sulfur rained down from heaven and destroyed them all. 
Okay, Jesus said it's going to be just like this on the day he, the Son of Man, is revealed. The same unfortunate attitude. How much proof does God got to give you? It's right there. It's right before your very eyes. He's being merciful. He brought you here. He's giving you all this information. And then you still have the audacity to just sit there and say, oh, no. Yeah, that's a good question. How is the economy? Is it swinging around? I got plans. To buy and sell and plant. And... What? Hey, I'll warn you just like the angels did in Lot's day when they came to town. Flee. Flee this wicked society. Flee this wicked world system. Cling to the cross of Jesus Christ. Get saved now before it's too late. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Well, hi, this is Pastor Billy Crohn of Sunrise Baptist Church. And I hope you enjoyed today's study. But before you go, let me ask you one final question. Are you sure that if you were to die today, that you go to heaven and not hell? Before you answer that, let me share a couple things with you. Did you know that the Bible says that God is holy and that we are not? And the Bible also says that the wages of our sin or our unholiness is death. In other words, when we die, and it's coming for each one of us, we're all marching towards the grave at different speeds, but it's going to happen. The Bible says, therefore, since the wages of our sin is death, we deserve to die and go straight to hell and not to heaven. And that's bad enough, but to make matters worse, we don't want to admit this. God already knows. He knows uh, all of our behavior, everything, our thoughts, what we've done, what even we're going to do. He knows it all. He's gone. Even though he already knows this, we don't want to admit this. And so out of love and mercy, God gave us something called his law or the Ten Commandments. It's kind of like his x-ray into our heart to show us what he already knows, that he is holy and that we are not. And it's this unholiness or sin that separates us from him. Let's take a look at to God's x-ray, if you will, his divine law, to show us what he already knows. The Ten Commandments, uh, the ninth one, says this, you shall not bear false witness. Okay, that's called lying. Okay, and if you've ever told a lie once, which we all have, myself included, the Bible says that makes you a liar. Okay, the, the, another commandment says you shall not steal. Okay, uh, and you might think, well, that's something that everybody does. Well, it doesn't make it right, and it demonstrates what God is trying to show us, that uh, we all have sin, and it's separating us from him. Even if you took a pencil in the third grade from somebody, if you did it without permission, that's stealing. And so now you've become a thief. The Bible says that you shall not use the Lord's name in vain. And how interesting it is and unfortunate that the only name under heaven by which men might be saved, the name Jesus Christ, has now become a common cuss word. The Bible says that God is so holy that even his name is holy. If you've taken the Lord's name in vain and used it as a cuss word or even flippantly, the Bible calls that the sin of blasphemy. And so now you become a blasphemer. The Bible says you shall not commit adultery. And Jesus says if you even look at another person with lust in your eye, you've committed adultery in your heart. And finally, the Bible says uh, you shall not murder and you might think, well, hey, I haven't done that one. Really? Well, again, the Bible says that the sin of hatred is the same as the sin of murder. The only difference is you pulled the trigger, if you will, in your heart. You wish they were dead. And in God's eyes, it's the same thing in principle. Folks, that's only just a couple of the Ten Commandments. We didn't even go through all of them. But I think you're starting to get the picture. The Bible is correct. We have all fallen short of the glory of God, myself included, and that we are separated from God as a result. And so when our time comes, we're not automatically going to heaven. We are headed for judgment. We are headed for hell. Now let me tell you the good news. The good news is that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to save us. Jesus Christ died on the cross. It was the death penalty of its day. He paid in full uh, the price for our sins to be forgiven. Let me give you an analogy. E for instance, even today, we could see that a person could commit a crime. Uh, they, they cannot reverse it. The, the sentence has been passed. The judge has uh, slammed his gavel, and they are ushered off into their jail cell. And in this particular crime, they are going to receive the death penalty. And so they're behind bars just waiting for the time, waiting for the call for them to go 
and uh, receive the death penalty. But believe it or not, as we know, there is a way that a person can get off a death row. And that is if the one in authority, the governor, would grant them a pardon. Now, they didn't earn it. Uh, They certainly don't deserve it. And there's nothing they could do uh, to earn it because nothing can reverse their crime. Okay? Yet the one in authority has that ability to grant them a pardon. Well, can I tell you something? That's what God has done through Jesus Christ. The cross was the death penalty of the day. God sent his one and only son to die on the cross, to take the death penalty in our place, and that if we would just receive his pardon for all of our sins, God is willing to allow us to get off a death row. He's willing to forgive us completely of all of our sins. That's the good news that I want to share with you. God loves you. The Bible says that God is not willing that anyone should perish, but everyone come to repentance. Won't you, if that's you, call upon the name of Jesus Christ right now? Won't you ask him to forgive you for sins? The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Won't you do that now, wherever you are? Please, take God up on his amazing, loving offer. I'll let you down. Man will let you down. People will let you down. But God never will. He wants to adopt you into his forever family. He loves you. He's willing to forgive you of anything and everything you've ever done, past, present, and future. It's amazing. Please, call upon Jesus now. Well, this has been Pastor Billy Crone of Sunrise Baptist Church. If there's anything that we can do for you, please don't hesitate to ask. Our number and information will come up here on the screen here shortly. And remember, I hope to see you in heaven. God bless. Thank you for watching this presentation from Sunrise Baptist Church. If you would like to send us a letter or any other kind of postage, you can reach us at 1780 Betty Lane, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89156. For more information, you can give us a call at 702-452-8599 or email us at bcrone at getalifemedia.com or you can visit our website at www.getalifemedia.com. Billy Crone and this ministry can also be found on Facebook and Twitter. Join us for services at www.sunriselv.com.